everyone welcome back to another episode of pog i hope you're having a great day and thanks for joining me today i'm going to be bringing you a pc gaming optimization guide along with the first version of a new tool developed by a friend of mine that will automate a good portion of the process so let's get right into it i don't have any drivers on this thing yet so I'm gonna do the first portion through my phone and then I'll get a screen recording once I get these drivers on here. This is a fresh Windows installation, so I'm gonna show you the steps to optimize from start to finish. First thing we're gonna do is run my new optimization program. It's called Pike, and it's gonna automate a lot of the optimization steps that I go through. So we're gonna run it with PowerShell. The first thing it's doing right now is telling me that there is a new GeForce game ready driver available, it's 527.56. And it's asking me if I wanna run the script. I'm just gonna type in A and hit enter. I'm gonna let it run all the updates that it finds. So it's gonna query the servers for Nvidia updates, Windows updates, and Intel chipset updates. It will also automatically set the power plan to high performance. So step two is to update your motherboard's BIOS. I'm going to demonstrate it on my ASUS Z690 Prime D4 Wi-Fi. So I think the easiest way to find it is just start typing the name of the board followed by the word BIOS into a Google search box. Usually the first result that comes up is going to be the manufacturer's website. And then on the motherboard support page, you're gonna see a BIOS link. Moving on to step three. We're going to enable resizable bar. I'm showing you how to do it on an X670E Aorus Extreme here. If you're on a different manufacturer's motherboard, the wording might be slightly different, the menus might be slightly different, but the process will be very similar. If you don't have the option for resizable bar support in your BIOS menu, then you probably need to update the vBIOS on your GPU. NVIDIA has a handy website containing the links to update the FE and AIB versions of NVIDIA GPUs. Step 4 is to enable game mode and hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Easiest way to get there for me is to open up the start menu, start typing game mode, and then it pops up. You can change the setting here. And then from this menu you can click graphics, go to change default graphic settings, and you can change the GPU scheduling option here. Step five in my optimization process is to overclock my RAM. I'm going to demonstrate it here on my X670E Aorus Extreme again. If you are unfamiliar with advanced RAM tuning, I would just recommend running the XMP or Expo profile of your RAM. If you are a tuner, then go ahead and tweak your RAM settings in this step. The settings shown here are just for demonstration purposes, so I would not recommend just copying these settings because, because they're gonna vary per system. All right, moving along. Step six in my optimization process is to overclock the CPU. This guide is specific for Intel processors, and I use Intel XTU to manage my overclocking settings. So go ahead and get that installed, and before you restart it, by default, Windows will have core isolation enabled. In order to run Intel XTU, you need to disable it. So go ahead and do that before you restart your machine. Step seven in my process is to overclock the GPU. If you're unfamiliar with overclocking your GPU, Tom's Hardware has a really good guide that can walk you through the basic process. Otherwise, if you're already familiar with tuning your GPU, then go ahead and do that in this step. All right, step eight. This is one that's overlooked pretty often in my opinion, but makes a pretty large impact in game feel. The option I'm talking about is called Enhanced Pointer Precision, and it's enabled by default in Windows. It applies an acceleration algorithm, and couple that with the fact that most of us are using mouses that have their own software controlling the sensitivity. It makes for all kinds of weird movement issues. So I really recommend taking the time to disable this option and feel the difference for yourself if you haven't done this before. Okay, step nine, I'll call this one optional. Personally, I leave G-Sync and V-Sync 
and any type of adaptive sync disabled on my monitors through the hardware menu on the monitor itself and through the NVIDIA control panel if the option is there. When I'm testing high-end hardware, this is how I run it and this is how I've gotten the best results. So I encourage you to test it out and see for yourself what works best for you because results can vary depending on hardware setups. So I hope this information was helpful for you. If it was, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe for more content like this. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day. Happy holidays, everyone.